Why is it that people with Asperger's syndrome really don't care what other people think about them? Now, I got to throw this in before we get started. This doesn't apply to every person with Asperger's syndrome, particularly those individuals who are um, young people. Children, teenagers, uh, maybe even into college, anybody under 25 years old, they, they have this thing with um, this challenge with peer pressure, and uh, it's a little different with them because they want to belong. They, they need, they, they are compelled emotionally to belong to a group. But as you get older and you mature, you begin to learn that, uh, you know, it's not all that. I mean, being accepted by other people and caring what others think about you it just uh, it's just pointless. It's just fruitless. There's no reason whatsoever to really care to give a flip. I mean, there's a couple um, a couple exa- uh, uh, exceptions rather. You do need to care what um, what your boss thinks. You know, your employer thinks about you. But by and large, humanity in general. They're critical people. You've learned the lesson. So why is it that people with Asperger syndrome and Uh, just don't care what other people think about it. Well, number one is because, well, they've experienced the worst. You know, I was talking about um, young people, children, teenagers, college kids, up to age 25 when the brain fully matures. Throughout those years, nearly, nearly everyone with Asperger's syndrome has experienced severe rejection, sometimes severe bullying. Sometimes it has been physical. So we have experienced the very worst of the worst of human behavior and it doesn't let up i mean it just because people are people they're not going to change because you move or because you relocate and we have experienced all that and we say we come to a point where we decide you know why am i caring what these people these mean careless hateful people why do i care what they think about me they're not good people um now that seems kind of harsh to classify all of humanity as bad people, but one thing that all humans have in common is they're all humans. Uh, human tra- even people with Asperger's syndrome, we have some of the same traits that are, well, it's theory of mind, that uh, are not unique to us, but all of us, some things are unique to us, but there are other things that are ubiquitous. Everybody has them. And we've learned those things, and we've experienced those things, and we say to ourselves, why do I care? what these people think, because eh, they're not good people. Number two is, we know that haters are everywhere. Now let's talk about the most extreme of bad people. This is those who we would classify as dark triad or narcissist or psychopaths. Um, Not everybody falls in that category. In fact, I think it's like, I don't know, maybe 5% of the population in general, can, is considered a psychopathic. Um, but uh, can you get away from these people? Can you isolate yourself from these people? Can you change your job and get away from them? And the answer is, no, you can't because, okay, you're working somewhere and you have some co-workers who are psychopaths or maybe they're narcissists or maybe they're both. You gotta quit your job, get away from those people. And when you change jobs, what you find at your second job is they're different psychopaths, they're different narcissists, but they're still psychopaths and they're still narcissists. Now, sometimes it may improve. That's great. You got a new job and you don't have the pressure you had at the old one, but sometimes it's worse. How do you know? I mean, how could you possibly know? And the answer is you don't. And so people with uh, Asperger's syndrome, because we tend to be observant, and we tend to be hypersensitive to human behavior more so than other people. We have learned that, that haters are everywhere and they cannot be avoided. And there's absolutely positively no reason. I mean, no reason with very few exceptions to give a flip what these people think about us. And so we just don't care. Number three is this. We only have one shot at life. Just got one go at life. That's a disturbing thought, isn't it? I'm pushing 70 years old and uh, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot of things over those 70 years or nearly seven decades. And uh, one thing I've learned is I can't 
I can't do it over. Um, yesterday was was here yesterday, but now it's gone. And whatever mistakes I made yesterday, say I over ate yesterday. Actually, I did. We went out to a Mexican restaurant. I love Mexican food, but I ate too much. I can't go back and redo yesterday and say, okay, maybe I'll just have a taco, you know, and let it go with that. No, I can't do it. Uh, I've learned. Now, maybe I'll eat a little less today to make up for it, to compensate. But take that idea and superimpose it upon your entire life. And what we find is our life is a long chain of uh, decisions. Some are good decisions, some are bad decisions. And one thing we can do is learn from what uh, experience has taught us. One thing we can't do is go back and redo it. Have you ever apologized to somebody? Um, I find myself doing that on occasion. you know, maybe even something I did 50 years ago. Um, if I see somebody, I say, you know, uh, I got to apologize to you what I what I said to you or what I did back when I was, you know, like 18 or 19 years old. And uh, why not? What I can't do is I can't go back 50 years or whatever it was and redo that experience and make it right. I can apologize for it, but I can't redo it. People with Asperger's syndrome understand that. Once your life is over, it's done. Now, do we want to... Uh, waste our entire lives or we do we want to invest what is left of our lives if we care what other people think ah uh, yeah there are some examples where we need to care but by and large if we care what other people think all we're doing is just wasting our lives we're just wasting today if i spend a day caring what everybody else thinks people by and large are critics This day is going to be gone tomorrow, and I can't come back and live it again today. Number four is what uh, I chose to use the term dogpiling. And what that, what dogpiling is, you may have experienced this at work or maybe at school. There's this this one guy or maybe this one girl who doesn't like you, and she lets it be known. And not only so, or he lets it be known. And not only so, but then, okay, now there's two of them. Because he or she has brought somebody else. She, she set the precedent, or he set the precedent to dislike you and to disrespect you. So now there's two of them. Okay, now it seems to be you got a little trend going here. That the cool thing to do, talk about peer pressure, is to dislike you. And so now you got three or four people who are piling on the criticism and the hate and the disrespect and uh, pushing you down. Sometimes literally, they're bullying you physically. Then you got a whole bunch of them. Uh, they just pile it on. So we call that dogpiling. Um, people with Asperger's syndrome, and I think a lot of people who don't have Asperger's syndrome understand that dogpiling is just what people do. And it's just kind of pointless. Um, what do you care what these people think? If they do or do not like you, they're going to do it anyhow. Um, you can avert some of it, but by and large, you can't stop it because, you know, one of the things we say that uh, is ubiquitous among the human race is every single human you have ever met has one thing in common, and that is they're all humans. And as humans, they have this critical, hateful attitude of social climbing, and uh, you're easy to climb because you, if, you're, if you are a person who has Asperger's syndrome, chances are you're an empath. You're not likely to fight back. You're low-hanging fruit, so they take advantage of you. But you understand it's all about ego of the other people. It's, it, it contributes nothing to your success whatsoever. And often what we do is we don't even fight it because how do you fight it? So we just don't do anything. So we've learned that we just can't care what these people think because they're motivated by their ego. They're not motivated at all by your success. People don't criticize you by and large because they want you to be successful. That's number five. Critics are self-serving. So why do critics criticize? Well, now, I know there are some exceptions to this. There are some people who will do a critique because they're trying to uh, improve whatever it is you're doing. I recall when um, when I was in fifth grade, I recall the um, 1964 and a half Mustang came out. And man, everybody went crazy over the car. It was a beautiful car. So I was in um, art class and took out a pencil 
and a piece of paper and I drew I, I drew rather what I thought a Mustang looked like and I did a pretty good job I got some of it wrong but I did a pretty good job and the art teacher came along I showed it to her I was real proud of it and uh, she said yeah it's good drawing now just to add a little color to it uh, I didn't want to now she wasn't being critical she was just offering a little critique she thought it would look better with color I didn't I thought color would ruin it I mean the whole idea was to have this nice black and white pencil drawing wish I could find that drawing I might still have it tucked away somewhere but the idea is critics tend to be self-serving they're not like the art teacher who's trying to help you produce a better work of art so why are people critical because when they find fault in you that means that uh, they're obviously more insightful than you are they're obviously smarter than you are and uh, okay so social climbing uh, they just climbed up the hierarchy a little bit higher in their mind well, who cares what these people think they're not interested in us they're not interested in me they're interested in uh, boosting their own ego they're trying to climb up a little bit higher that's that's pretty much all it is so people with Asperger's syndrome understand that because we have experienced as I said earlier I mean literally from day one that uh, people by and large uh, aren't interested in helping us they're not even interested in helping each other so who cares what they think with a few exceptions of people who are offering critiques for the express purpose of helping us well not only are critics self-serving but critics can also be very costly somebody will criticize something that you have done or some idea that you have and you listen to the critic and so you don't move forward to you don't move forward with your plans well if it's a business that you're thinking about and the critic comes along and tells you all the reasons why this won't work and you listen to that um, and so you, your business never gets off the ground and whatever you would have earned with that business you've lost it I mean it's just gone instantly I recall when uh, when I started my direct mail business man that's been I don't know 35 40 years ago you'd be surprised how many people could explain to me why that wouldn't work um, they didn't even think about it they had no idea what they were talking about but uh, they just like to say that won't work I can see why and they are really 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 smart according to them but if you look at these people most of them they had no business experience whatsoever how would they know what would and would not work now I didn't have a lot of business experience but I understood there is a principle of testing test marketing and you try something out and see if it will work or not and if it doesn't work you say well maybe it needs to be tweaked a little bit and maybe that will work so you try it then if it doesn't work you say okay that doesn't work I'm gonna go do something that has more promise but you don't stop because somebody who has no idea what he or she is talking about has in their mind found some criticism to be expressed all they're doing is pumping up their own ego and if you listen to them if I had listened to those critics 35 40 years ago uh, I would have lost all the proceeds from my business I would have lost uh, uh, decades of income so criticism is costly and people with Asperger's syndrome and a few others they understand that we don't care what other people think because well they're willing to destroy our future resources so they can enjoy a second or two of ego puffing so uh, you know countless thousands of dollars could have been lost just so this person could have the satisfaction of pumping up his ego or her ego they are costly all right number seven is because people with Asperger's syndrome value honesty one of the traits of people with Asperger's syndrome and this is noticeable from the earliest days of your life we're talking about preschoolers we're talking about people first second grade 
you know, six, seven years old is uh, people with Asperger's syndrome tend to be painfully honest, sometimes to their own detriment. But we notice that humanity in general, what did we say about humanity? Oh, yeah, every human has the same thing in common, and that is they're all humans. And as humans, they tend to be dishonest. And something that we don't value is we don't value dishonesty. Like some other people, they think they're being savvy. They think that's smart to uh, scam somebody out of money or beat somebody out of paying a bill or whatever. Aspies value companionship. We value love. We value acceptance. We uh, value those types of things. But uh, literal things, something, no, we, uh, well, yeah, we understand the value of um, somebody dings our car. We understand, yeah, that's going to cost some money. We understand that. But we, we have a priority system of what is and what is not important. And what is important to us, among other things, is just honesty, just being upfront and uh, straightforward. You see those two rectangles on the screen? If you like what you heard, click on one of those rectangles and we'll keep the conversation going. If not, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you all next time.